I came to give my personal respects to somebody who has done more than almost anyone else to conceive and to create modern Singapore as we know it today. Uh, he was a giant. He made contributions in so many fields. You don't know where to start. All listed, up. we've listed out all of his achievements. But he was a very special person. I knew him as a child when I was a child because he worked closely with Minister Mentor. Uh, in at work, um, he he was in defence when I went into the SAF. In fact, it was because of him uh, primarily that we had the SAF scholarship scheme, which I went on in the first batch. And he took a very personal interest in the scheme and in the scholars, and made sure that we were properly looked after, trained, given the right postings, tested out, and if we are measured up, put into even more demanding responsibilities. And uh, the meticulousness and the comprehensiveness of his interest and his touch and his knowledge of what was happening was uh, something remarkable. I worked on a few projects which he was interested in, but really as a very junior officer. Um, later on, when I came into government, he was already retired from the cabinet, but he was still in MAS. Uh, he was like a god. I mean, he, he made the system work, that part of it, the monetary policy. And when later on I went to MAS, really we were building on what he had done. And a lot of what we're doing today is what he had done, and we built upon. He was making, I think, his last uh, public speech as a minister, and he spoke. He says, if we're coming into this, we are joining holy orders. And your job is to build on what we have done, not treat it as a pinnacle, but as a foundation to make it better. And I think that's our job. I remember being knowing him as a very small child. He'd come to Oxley Road for meetings in the basement. Uh, he drove a very old uh, jalopy. can't remember what it was now, Vauxhall, I think. Um, but he didn't worry about fancy cars or fancy dress. Uh, he, he just wanted to get the job done. He had a tremendous grasp of how to get the job done. Would you know if the minister mentor plans to cut short his trip to pay his last... No, I spoke payments. to him yesterday and he wanted very much to attend the state funeral and he said please try and make the arrangement so that he will be able to attend. Otherwise, uh, if it's not possible, then uh, he will speak later in Parliament on Dr. Goh. But it's best that he is able to attend and he will speak at the state funeral. So I'm very happy that we were able to work it out and it will be next Sunday. Yeah, personally, what's the biggest lesson they have learned from Dr. Uh, I think that you need a very strong cabinet uh, to make the system work. Uh, the Prime Minister is important, but unless you have very strong people in cabinet and you make very good use of them and uh, they are able to contribute and make this a team which is bigger than any individual member. I think we will subperform. And that's what we were able to do with the first generation. That's what I'm trying to do with the present cabinet and what I must do to bring in more people who will be able to fulfill that role into the next generation. When I first came into, went into the SAF when Dr. Goh was a minister, it was 1971, and he was 52 years old. I'm already 58 today. So it's not late, not early at all to be worrying about the next generation and whether how the government will work in 15, 20 years' time. And I think that's a, that's a very deep lesson. You can have any system, you can have any set of ministries and perm secs and civil servants and ministers and ministers of state. But you need really competent people to make the system work and to give it that spirit and that spark. And that's what Dr. Goh had in abundance.
when uh, the pioneers are alive, there's a certain res- reserve and modesty and restraint, and you always feel that uh, you, you 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 want to maintain human proportions. But in fact, they made enormous contributions, and it's important that the new generation knows this. And they don't always know this. Lee Kuan Yew, everybody has heard of, everybody knows, and that was a, that's the image. But in fact, it's a team, and there's Go King Sui, there's Rajaratnam, there's Do Chin Chai, Osman Wok, Eddie Barker, and so on. And these personalities are not so well known. And I think we need to find ways to make people know them.